you'll hear a lot of light workers, psychics, mediums, and healers say they create space for other people. So what does it mean? How do you create space for someone else? I believe you can do it in four steps or so. I had to think back to, you know, when I am holding space for somebody, what am I actually doing? One, actively listening. You're not listening to reply or rebut, but you're listening to actually truly understand and allow a person's expression of truth and feelings. Put your phone down, pause the TV, stop whatever it is you're doing and give your full attention to that person. But you're helping them to feel seen and heard. Number two, sending love. People say this all the time too, like just go ahead and send love to them. It's like, okay, well, what is what does that mean? What does that entail? How do I send love to somebody? To send love to anyone or anything, you can use some of your senses. You can use your physical ears to actively listen to the person. You can use your inner ear to listen for things that are unsaid. So maybe that person needs love in one form or another, like a hug or a touch. Maybe they need somebody to validate their feelings. Maybe they need to just feel heard. Maybe they are wanting to feel understood. You can use your physical eyes to study the beauty in their face while they're talking. Have you ever sat in uh, nature and just stared at a flower or a plant or a tree, just took in all of its beauty and actually focused your attention on the beauty of the thing? In moments like that, you're actually connecting to the divinity of that thing. You are sending love by just appreciating its beauty. You're connecting to the source or God energy of that natural thing. You are connecting also to the source or God energy of yourself and you're naturally quieting the mind, focusing on love instead of thoughts, especially those incessant thoughts. It is a form of meditation in a way. And then you can use your emotions to feel love, feel loving. So you can essentially channel love from source energy to the person in need just by doing that. You can even say a few chants in your head or mantras like, I love you, I love you, I love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you which also builds up a loving energy and frequency, and then it sends that energy to the person that you're talking to. You can use your empathy to help a person feel heard and understood. Empathy is a natural state that really enables a person to build an emotional connection with other people. Number three, raise your vibration. Since source God energy is the highest vibrational energy and frequency available on earth, you are raising your vibration in that moment to your highest consciousness and unconditional love. Same difference. Since you are focusing your energy on a thing or things or person or people, while connected to unconditional love, you are also sending a signal of love and energy to the thing or person you're putting focus on. If it is in nature, it will absolutely give and receive love because that is nature's natural state, a state of love. Humans, on the other hand, are a little bit more difficult. <laughs> we may not always be open to love, even if we think we are, but that doesn't mean that you don't send it. You can send it, and if their highest self is open and willing, the loving energy will be absorbed. If they're not in a good place of receiving energy or love, they may block it, and that's okay, no harm, no foul, because now that love energy is out of you, it's out into the atmosphere, and it can be absorbed by something else that may be a need. Maybe there's a plant sitting nearby a few feet away that you haven't watered in a month. Maybe it can take on some of that energy. When you are sending love or healing thoughts or energy, you are essentially connecting your silver cord, typically from your heart center to their heart center, and then transmitting love signals across that cord. So this can help a person feel loved, heard, peaceful, calm, safe, understood. And that way they can express themselves and they can be who they really are, their authentic self. It harbors openness and honesty that you may not get otherwise. It creates a space, an energy in the room between you and them and in the room of safety and love. In this safety and love, a person can more easily, fluidly, and quickly express their feelings where there is no judgment, no worries, they feel trusting, they feel safe to bear their souls. Many empaths naturally create this space without even really knowing it or doing it unconsciously. That's why empaths tend to talk to random strangers more often, people at the barbershop or nail salon or grocery store, and people tend to spill their life to you because they feel safe to do so. If you feel yourself slipping into thought or judgment when you're sending love to that person, 
Just bring your focus back to your breath and taking in their beauty. Study their face, take in all of its glory and beauty, and that'll put you back into the love state. Also, when I say judgment, I'm not just referring to judging another person. Judgment is also referring to how you judge things and experiences in the world, such as judging something as wrong or right, judging it as good or bad, cold or warm, loving or hateful. There should be no judgment when you're creating and holding space for somebody. And then number four, releasing expectations. That's a tough one. When you are creating space for somebody, it's important that you don't take on their emotions as your own. For one, it's not necessary. Back in the old days, uh, shamans used to take on the illness of another person and then they would release it to the light or the universe. We don't have to do that anymore. The energy is totally different and new in the universe. And so you don't have to take on other people's emotions as your own or their negative energy. So you can create space for somebody without getting sucked into an egoic state. If you are somebody that is like a ride or die and you tend to mirror other people's emotions, you know, so let's say somebody was talking about how they're wronged and you're like, yeah, fuck that. And why would they do that? And oh my God, you're actually lowering the vibration in the room and in the space. So that's not conducive. You're actually harming the space because you're now sending signals matching theirs, which may be anger, frustration, sadness, hate, etc. It is not a conducive environment to send love in and raise your vibration. Instead, release all expectations about what you are wanting to get out of creating the space for them. Make it about them, not about you. You don't want to create space for somebody only if you're expecting something in return, or even if you're just expecting appreciation. By doing this, again, you're going more into an ego state and you are lowering the vibration in the room and in the space which means you won't have the ability in that moment to create the space and hold the space, no matter how ascended or superior you might feel or your ego might make you feel. If your focus is on what you're going to receive in return, again, it's lowering the vibration. It's much easier to create a healthy, loving, safe space when you yourself aren't attached to the end result. Instead, you're just creating space to allow them to be who they are in those moments and just enjoying the energy. When it's done and they don't need that space anymore, make sure you are disconnecting your cord from their heart to your heart and removing it all together. This is where some empaths get into trouble. Because we want to help people, we tend to keep the cords connected long past the time we should. So we continue to send them love and we hope they get better and they feel better. We hope they are able to release some of that pent up energy, uh, the negative energy in their bodies. You can send love though without being connected. You can ask source to send love as well. So it doesn't have to come directly from you. When you are done, you got to disconnect. And then if, if you need to just keep going, ask source to keep sending the energy for them. If you don't disconnect, there is a great possibility that you'll be feeling their emotions all day and sometimes longer, which in turn hurts your space and your energy because you're taking their energy and emotions on as your own. That's not healthy either. Instead, cut the energetic cord between you. You can close your eyes and you can imagine the cord or rather cords because you probably have collected a lot more than just the one cord throughout that day, week, month, year, etc. But imagine the cord coming out from your heart chakra. Imagine that you're holding a tool that can easily cut through any cord made of any material. Could be a Damascus blade. It could be an angel dagger like in the show uh, Supernatural. <laughs> Love that dagger. I want one myself. Could be a sword, an axe, a machete, or even like a feather or a blade made of sunlight or source light. Then imagine, or you can do it physically using your hand in place of the tool, that you swipe down three times, cutting the cords to and from everyone and everything that is not serving your highest and best good. All the connections that you don't need will be severed. You're returning their energy to them and you're taking your energy back into you and you are severing the connection while it's no longer needed. Creating and holding space for somebody isn't the only use of this ability. You can also create and hold space for yourself. Those times that you need to dig deeper and find a root cause of something. Uh, maybe it's something that has been shoved in the shadows for a long time, swept under the rug, or an incident that just happened that has you reeling. Build up that ability, practice, 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 build up the confidence, until you do it naturally without even really thinking about it. So that is your lesson for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a good one.